and they try and grab their hands. But that, that, that is a bad idea. Your hands slide, you can't pull. When instead, you step here and you wrap the sword like this, then this gives you a very strong wrap. This is a real versatile multi-tool when it comes to fighting that people don't appreciate because they're like, oh, I can't grab, I can't grab. But the fact that you can't grab it is also is an advantage because he can't grab it. But we've all used axes at some point and the person just grabs the axe and you're like, damn, you know. But with a sword, he can't. He has to try and work around it. You know, however he wants to try and work around it. Like, okay. Just like, here. You see, and so with the sword, it is all about because it's nice and long, getting these angles, and then like this. Look, I can slide that out. With an axe, I could not do that. You're trapped. With a sword like that, look, cool. Got this out. Get on top. And is this, you know, the sword that being able to slide a sword out becomes a massive advantage so often that people don't really appreciate it. Because when you're getting in bad grapples and your weapon's getting all tied up and it's all wrapped, if you have an axe, it's like, okay, you now have to somehow get hold of your axe, pull, or create space to get it out. With a sword, it's like, you can just do that. It's why I prefer a sword, personally, a falchion in a boha, because it doesn't get tangled so in the same way. You know, you can always get it out. You can always re-maneuver it, position yourself. So often in our sport, because of the armor, we find ourselves getting trapped. And so if your people are tying you up, being able to create that space, a little bit of movement, and you know, being able to then use it to create a bad position for him, and then get it out, becomes, that, that's the advantage to a falchion. To take home and just practice it's just ways that you can use a sword to tie people up. And it gets interesting, particularly with longer blades. It gets interesting on things you can do to people. You know, and I've had people in all sorts of weird positions where they just you can just trap them, you know, with a sword like this really easily. And then, if you need to, you can just slide it out to reposition yourself around the person. And it's that being able to constantly slide the weapon out to reposition it, that becomes a massive advantage of the sword over an axe. But what the reason it's important that we can be able to do this is that it's very, very difficult in our sport because we we have this big, you know, big um, the armor on it slides. It's very hard to trap an arm in our sports, which makes it really difficult to wrestle. Like anyone who's done gi or you know, I mean, even in no gi, you're grabbing a wrist. In a gi, obviously, you grab the gi, but if you can't grab hold of an arm, getting hold of a person can get really, really difficult, particularly for wrestling. Because if I'm here and I want to, his, his arm's obviously coming up, I can grab it, st strip it down, and this allows me to get position myself. And I you can use the sword a lot like that to then position him. Just by grabbing the gauntlet, it allows you to just uh, do a little thing. So also people misunderstand a lot uh, armor removal and uh, armor grab. Um, and it sort of seems to be this sort of like a big debate at the moment. It's like a change of rules. I mean, the rules never changed. The rules are sort of got to be clarified. Um, they never changed. I mean, armor grabbing, I mean, armor removal is, is a big thing. We, we never do that. Uh, however, grabbing the armor, it's, it's, as so we say, if you, if you if you advance him to the, to the wrestling position, this, for me, this, I'm not trying to remove that armor, all I'm doing is positioning my opponent. So, so, so I'll hold that and I'll push it against his arm. And look, look, look what it does straight away to, to his body. So, so once in once in position, I'm not removing armor, I'll grab it and I'll put, push in <coughs> straight away. Give me his head, I can advance position, I can throw. Yep, so there's, there's, there's so many options potentially you can do. Uh, pretty much Daniel was saying, I mean, lots of judo throws, lots of uh, wrestling throws. Uh, 
you need to establish uh, control somehow, yeah? So obviously, a lot of wrestling will be grabbing, yeah? So potentially getting that head. In our sport, this is easy, this is not. This, there is armor, there is gauntlet. So what I can do, I can do that, yeah? So I, I, can, I can grab the, the edge of a gauntlet, so if you put a gauntlet on, just put, a, put the last one right off. So if you can put a gauntlet on, also it does is if you if you grapple, I'll do that. Yeah. And it's not because I'm trying to remove that uh, that gauntlet away from him. Can you guys see it all? Yeah. So it's not because I'm trying to remove the gauntlet from his hand, it's because I'm trying to position him to where I want him to be. Uh, so it's the same thing, same thing with the tabards, yeah? So these days, grabbing shoulder, can't do it, yeah? But you can grab a tabard and potentially around the guy, yeah? Now, I've got his back, uh, I've got his waist, I go around, yeah? So, so it's, it's, it's quite important. However, don't feel like you guys, so if I take the gauntlet, don't feel like they're, they're no ways away from it. It's, it's not like it's some sort of magic magic formula. If somebody grabs your gauntlet, you can't get out of it. They're like, oh, damn, this is like a, I'm glued there. So if you grab my gauntlet, so this kind of feels trapped, all I have to do is, Load and reload. So all I have to do is load, reload. Yeah? So, yeah. Okay. so, so similar thing with like trapping weapons. And, like people sort of seems to be stuck in this position and they're like, what am I going to do? What what on earth? This, I'm, I'm stuck. No, it's like rather than just pull back because he's gonna go walk with you back and he's gonna grip tight and tight. So all I have to do is reload, load, yeah? So it's so the, the sort of release pressure pressure out. So you never, you never, you never stuck in a situation where you don't want to be. However, you're talking about armor grabbing again. So, so if I'm positioning myself for the armor grab, as I'm, as I'm stepping in, my hand could come in. This is not armor grab. This is not helmet remover. It's again positioning against against the helmet. So I'll so I'll hold the helmet with, with my thumb, and again straight away it's an awkward position. But this establishes me. It's a horrible position for him. He will start making mistakes. And if he starts making mistakes, I can establish and I can potentially get to, again, a very strong position and he's just going to throw, and throw them back down. So, so never guys think it's, you're, always, you're always trapped. There's always the way, the way out of it. Um, so even, even so if I, if I hold, the, hold, hold the gauntlet, so, sorry, hold the elbow. So if you, if you hold the elbow, again, suddenly it might seem like, oh shit, I'm, I'm trapped there. You're not. You can straight away push the push the push the arm up and push it against my shoulder. I can't hold it anymore, right? Now, the simple, very simple things. I mean, people sort of people sort of almost forget about it. It's, it's like uh, seems like seems to be oh damn, got my shoulder, got my elbow, done, finished. Yeah. Um, no. All I have to do. So let's say grab, grab, grab my elbow. So all I have to do is move up and in. So suddenly he's holding it still but it's not doing him that much of a good anymore, yeah? And, and that's simple things, very, very simple things. In wrestling, uh, it's a lot about position and trying to establish dominance. It's, it's not necessarily about who is stronger, who is faster. Uh, so lots of wrestling, you, you will see this in any point of wrestling, it's, it's sort of in his head. It's, it's before we even come anywhere, it's this sort of thing, yeah? So we, we, are, we are just in there, nothing happens, but just before I stepped in, I will grab that and I'll move it in. So now, for example, so so simple little thing. All I done was grab the armor for a second, moved it towards, and I stepped in. Now, watch what happens, yeah? So I got all my hands free. He's got one one danger for me. This danger I just purely blocked with my body. And it was simple grab, and suddenly I got a I got an advantage of, of two of my hands. Yeah, against one of his, and again, watch this. So I put my, my elbow there, and boom, he can't go for my headlock, and he can't go for the other. Yeah. Right? So, so simple things, and all, all it started from was a single, very short armor grab. Right? Not, not much, not a lot. All I done was, and you can do this with a shield, you can do this with a, if, if you're using pole arms or anything, you can, you can use a gauntlet, bucklers, that, that's a simple thing, yeah? So, or you can, even, even if he's got a shield, Similar thing. So I'll grab the edge of a shield, touch it, touch it to his body, and I'll move, move up. And now I'm close. 
all danger is here, now danger is removed. Yeah, potentially. I mean, of course, he, he's not going to just stay there, he's going to fight back. But from, from a simple thing, I advance really uh, to the really strong position, potentially. So if you, if you grab a shield again, what, what, what's here? Yeah. So. Some, some people, again, so if you put a shield on, so some, some people think this is sort of, I don't know, it's tricky, dangerous, whatever. Uh, I play this with a shield a lot. I, I do this all the time, so I'll grab a shield and I will, I will use the shield against the opponent. So suddenly, I'm actually, <clears throat> from, from a simple thing, I'm actually <laughs> trapping him in his, in his own position. So he was, he was defended with a shield, fairly happy. I used the shield against him. Uh, so it's similar with armors, yeah? So we can use that position to, to go somewhere else. But potentially, I mean, I use polar, so I swap hands. But again, if you got a, most people are left-handed with a shield. So if you, so you grab the top of a shield, boom, in. So I'm, I'm hiding a vision, yeah? So all it was, so we were straight in a position, I grab the top, and, uh, and I'm controlling that, yeah? So now I'm controlling his body, he can see, I can take his back, and I can control where, where we need to be. Uh, does that make sense? So, <laughs> it's meant to be some, some really horrible thing, and, and it's not like he can't get out of it either, right? So if I, if I do this, what would he do? Get, get it straight away, yeah? Boom, he, he knows it. So even if I hold it, boom, what? So, so that, that's already a bit of a mistake, but again, so you keep pulling back, so you keep pulling back. So what would I say? Boom, straight, yeah? So come back to, to what we sort of shown them roll below. So I, I grabbed it, and it's boom, he started pulling back, and I could hold it. He, he loaded, it, reloaded, it, straight away. I can't do it, I can't hold it anymore. So that's so that, that fairly simple things with, with, with armor grabbing that could, uh, that could help you with, with your wrestling uh, without being illegal. It's, it's never, it's like about, about us, it's never about armor removal. We never try to, we never try to be sort of sneaky and remove the armor. Uh, for us, it's all about positioning uh, of, of the body, positioning of other advance to, to, to the wrestle. Um, so it doesn't make sense, guys, if I what I'm trying to say. Yeah, cool. so, so, so armor grabbing is always about getting dominance and, and, and holding the positions. So it's almost as a, as a Zigi control in, in other, other wrestling. So if, if you go to judo, so that you always see the judo fighter fighters doing that. Yeah? So, so they grab the gi and then, then, then they trip. Yeah? But again, we, we don't do that, so, uh, so we, we use armor against it. Yeah? Sort of similar thing. Sometimes I'll, I'll go in, I'll actually grab the hip and I'll rotate the hip just to get around. Yeah? But ag again, it's, uh, be, be creative with it. We never try to remove the armor, but try to get it to, to, to suit us. Yeah? And, and never think you can't get out of the armor, armor, armor lock or armor grab. There's always ways around it. Even if I say like elbows, all you have to do is position. Straight away, it means nothing. So if I can have a shield back. Uh, anything you think of, I didn't think of with armor grabbing? Um, well, they only were a particular bit um, you didn't speak about a lot of it. Was sometimes with the, um, like Boa said, when it comes to grabbing the armour uh, to get position, um, you see there's this one is something I do quite a lot, um, record. Because if you're doing uh, like wrestling or noogie, doing this is fairly easy to get a leg. But that is with armor, you can't necessarily you can't really do that. But you do have the edge of his leg, so it's not about lifting the leg. If I'm grabbing down here, or if I grab the leaf, it's about just making the leg light so that I can lean him. Because then he can't use his leg to stay strong. If I try and push him, and he's got both legs strong. You see, it's harder. But if I can just grab this, I can just lean. And it's really simple, like grabbing hold of the leaf here, or the leg here, you know, it's just simple. And it gives you a really strong position. And again, like, you're never going to pull somebody's leg armour off. No. It's no. not about removing the armour. When it comes to the wrestling, you know, like I was just saying, these armour grabs, it's not like you grab and hold it, because if you just held it, it's not going to achieve anything. I'm not winning just because I'm holding his armour. You win when you put somebody on the floor. So like I said, when you grab these things, all it is about is just 
getting position on the opponent, just like that. So when I'm, if I grab anything, I'm grabbing it for a very short period of time before I'm moving to something else. Because if I just grabbed his gauntlet and held it when we were doing this, what's actually going to happen? Nothing. And in all honesty, I'll probably get tripped. Because if I'm focused on trying to hold one thing, that sort of shit happens. That's exactly, you know, that's, that's exactly what would happen if I focused on just trying to hold one wrist. But if you just grab it, remove it, remove something on the person, and that's how we use them. That's how we use armor grabs. You know, and with time, you start to get like a bit um, tricky uh, with it. You know, so like, you know, my hands over here. Yeah, you know, I can, I can grab like leaf. You know, you can position people, and it becomes a bit about when you're wrestling. If wrestling's not about holding somebody to me. Wrestling's about manoeuvring, you know? You can't can't see out there. No, you could. Yeah. <laughs> That's a slap you in the face. You know, it's about little, it's often about just little pulls and pushes wrestling is. That's what it's about to, in order to get position. Um, Do you have anything else armor grabbing? Not necessarily about armor grabbing, it's just more about... Uh, I want to go over. So more about trying to get, get the message across. So the armor grabbing is not necessarily the thing, the evil thing people think. It is when they when they sort of read it on this on this website and people say armor grab armor grab. It's it's not about that. It's nothing to do with armor removal or anything. And I would it's love I would love to properly differ, differentiate between the armor removal and armor grab. The thing is, is, people seem to think that if you grab hold of somebody's elbow, it's going to fall off. Mm -hmm. In all honesty, if your elbow is going to fall off because somebody grabbed it, you haven't attached it properly. Yes. You really honestly yeah. haven't because when we are when we are fighting. How often do our leaves lock yeah. and you end up having to rip, rip your arm off the person? If your leaf was going to come off because somebody's holding it, holding it it's going to come off when you're wrestling. It's just because there's the pressure that put on our elbows when we're wrestling and the elbows are grinding. But you should, your armour should be attached to your gambeson so strongly that you could literally do pull-ups off it. Like you should be able to hang up far hold because that's the sort of pressure your arm is going to be under when people start yanking on it. Um, there's one other thing I just wanted to cover in terms of wrestling. Um, again, I prefer big shields and it's not about protecting me, it's actually about this becomes a weapon to manipulate. Again, lots of people switch it to bucklers, you know, because they can slide it under, etc. But there is some really big advantages to big shields. Um, and so in armour, Something that we can't really do, even with a buckler, is you can't really get a good tie grip. Now you can get your hand here, but let's face it, you can just sl it just slides off, doesn't it? Like you can't get the grip. Like out of armor, I can get this grip that he can't really get off, and this becomes really strong. Now, when you've got, I do apologize, I'm going to be different. When you've got a long shield, you can get positioning here, which actually gives you a grip on the back of the head and equally what happens is it's really hard for him to come round and the similar thing that I did with the sword I can do with the shield mm. because it's a large bar so it's very easy with a shield to manoeuvre people so a lot of the time people almost treat this big shield like it just gets in the way like it's just something like Boa showed where somebody grabs it and oh it's stuck but the a big shield, there is some real advantages to the length of it. Because what I do a lot, look where it is now. Okay. And even when I'm holding the sword, I get my fingers there with my gauntlet. And I can pull it round. Well if it was a small buckler and it's pinned here, you've got to feed in really deep to be grabbing that. With a shield, it's very easy because the length of it for me to get that grip there on the edge of it to so feed it through or if I'm in here I can you know in his arm he's trying to grab me here it's very easy because this slides up his helmet it's very easy for me to walk that with the length of it into positions or if I'm on the inside here, no, no, I'm, 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 for example, yeah. you can 
with the point of it and they're being tight here because obviously people grab hold of your shield all the time yeah. but again here because it acts as a lever okay we'll hold the shield then because of the length of it we can start using it to maneuver and people like, like i said people just treat this big shield as a thing that is just oh it's always in the way always in the way and that's because people don't think well how can i actually use this and again, if he's got his arm pinned really tight to his side because he's wrestling over here, if I've got a buckler, I'm never pushing into this gap. But with the shield, it's like you can slide in to the gap in a way that you can't with a buckler. You can push it in and then it's like you, you can wrap it up, maneuver. And I use it all the time, if you can see that. I wrap the tip of my shield all the time, you know, because it allows me to get position on people. So I'm able to do sliding it through, which, like I said, you just wouldn't do, you can't do that with a buckler at all. You know, we can just move around, particularly if he's first, could you come and stand here a second? If he's fighting my teammate, you know, and you know, maybe he's a big strong guy, and I can just push it through, you can peel them open against the list using that shield. A lot more than people realise. By tucking it here in, then it opens them up, and then you can start doing things to him. Where before he was closed, then it's just like, okay, I can just feel it open. And again, it's something that you can't do if you don't have a long, thin bit of wood to push with. So it's advantageous to have a narrow point? Uh, yeah, if I'm going to have a long shield, I want to know a point. Because I want to be able to push it into places or to open things up. Um, I also find, personally, when you have a, a this shape, when you go to punch, if their arms are in the way, it pushes through. I find that when you have like an oval shield, what happens is you punch and it hits the arms. I've used both shapes, I've used lots of shapes. Same with coffins. When you have like a square, as long as you punch, hits the arms. I find this shape, you punch, it goes through the arms because it pushes the arms apart. So when it comes to a shield shape, I am a bit biased and I do think that this is a superior shape. And when it comes to, uh, if you're going to use a large shield, I mean, you know, because this shape, it's also, like I said, when it comes to pushing into gaps, you can push in and because of the shape of it, it opens up. So if, I've, if for some reason, when I'm trying to open somebody up, you can push through with this shape. With other shaped shields, you, ha you don't have that advantage. This does allow you to really push through a gap. How about the back length of this platform? Well, this part? Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, I like it to cover my elbow, and there's several reasons for that. The first one being helmets, <laughs> let's face it. Um, because one of the things obviously that does happen a lot is if you are wrestling, so I've got somebody down in a bad position, if his teammate's going to come over and hit my arm, it's going to be much like elbow, isn't it? Yeah, so the back length good. just protects the elbow. I do like a flat edge because if I'm wrestling and I can slide the back edge here, and it, it, it's only a little detail, what it does, it stops him moving the arm. You now can't get it back over my head. Well, if the back of the shield's round, I can't do that. What happens is you do that and this arm can then just slide up my head to here. Well instead, if I just literally position that there, it now can't slide up to my head. It literally just stops it. And so there are things, and a similar positioning here, there are times when you want to be able to pull with the back edge of a shield. You want to be able to pull. Obviously this is not as tight on my arm as it would be in armour. Normally in armour this is obviously absolutely strapped, this is wobbling a little bit. But there are times when the back edge becomes useful for things. And like I said, this, when you are wrestling, wrestling is a very dynamic situation. Particularly in our sport, when you have three on one, two on one, three against two, it gets so messy and there's so many things. But as you get um, more experience, where you can think through. Like at first, we all experience this. At first, when you're fighting, it's all chaos, isn't it? You can't think, you don't know what's going on, you're just there, you're like, Aah! Like, yeah. But as you get more experience, even when I've got like people hitting me and all stuff going on, I can see what I need to do and I can position 
you know, block position. And there are times when, and this is an example, mm. that I think with a flat back edge of a shield becomes actually useful. And I've I've done, I did this actually, I can't remember which buy it was the other day, but I was here, it was two on one, and I, that, <laughs> pushed the head down so one of my teammates could get on the back of the head. And again, you can't, if you have the round back of the shield, you can't do that. There are things you can do with a flat edge, and you'll find them as you wrestle. And so to try and go through every situation starts to become a little bit, you know, crazy, but you find them, as big as you get experience, you find places where the flat edge of a shield actually like allows me to like trap a gauntlet. And sometimes it's just that simple. It's just, okay, there. And that pinch just means that, okay, I can now get hold of him here before the maneuver somewhere else. Where if I had the round back of the shield, you can't. And sometimes those little details start mattering. And when like Boas and I are wrestling you, these are the things we do. It's like little grabs, little positions, little traps, and it's just constantly trying to get little advantages throughout the whole thing. I just wanted to go over the shield a little bit, because again, I see everyone switching to bucklers, everyone's like, ah, oh, big shields are useless. And I, I, I like my big shield. <laughs> it's uh, precious to me, you know? Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But people, one of the things we want you to kind of take away from this is that this sport isn't just wrestling in armour, it's wrestling with armour. It's not just wrestling, oh, and I'm holding a sword and shield. It's wrestling with a sword and shield. And that's a really important distinction. It's one of the things that makes our sport very different. Because with practice and time, um, as you play around with using swords to wrap people up, and actually getting this drama, you'll start to see a completely, that's where our sport becomes unique. Because too often our sport looks like judo in armor, wrestling in armor. And, but actually when you start to see people that have a lot of experience with like wrestling with swords and shields, if you look at the details, you start to see them using swords to wrap people up. For sure. You'll start to see them like grabbing bits and pieces of armor. And you'll start to see an entirely different martial art coming out of our sport with time. It was, it was a similar thing when we were in the, in the US and we spoke about pole armor. One of the biggest things I tried to put across was pole armor is not just a big stick with a, with a metal at the end. Don't just use it to, to lump people on it. In the US we sort of covered uh, the, the grappling with pole armor. It's not just about hitting the pole armor. And, and again, it's similar with the, with the shield, with the sword. It's, you, sh you shouldn't see them as a things that work against you guys. Use them for your advantage. Any questions? I know we've gone through a whole lot of different subjects. Uh, I have one question. Sorry. <laughs> uh, is it legal to grab the leg? What, the leg armor? Yeah. yeah. It's legal. Yeah. So the leaf here, or the leaf here, you grab. Yes. Yeah. You can't remove. I, I, if, yeah, no, no, yeah. no. If I, was to I, do this, I thought that it's uh, completely then, uh, forbidden to touch yeah, the like legs this. in any way. No, no, no. no. You can't touch yeah. the back of it. I can't yeah. go the back of the leg here. Yeah. But the knee. It's okay. Can I show? So, that, that's illegal. Yeah. That, that is not. Yeah? So I can do that. Or, I mean, this is dangerous, but <laughs> I, can, I can do that. It is legal. That's legal. It's good for short guys. Yeah, it is for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we do leg pickups all the time, yeah, so if, yeah. if you do two on one situations, we do go for legs. Particularly when you are short, because every yeah. everybody is going to be. Yeah, yeah. they all uh, for the head. And you just, it's good. Yeah, you have to go. Yeah. You know? I, I actually didn't do that. Bohurst does it to me all the time. It comes over my head. And then yeah, sometimes and you yeah. go for the. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah because I do some wrestling. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I go for each get, get the leg no. straight away. No, the back of the knee is specifically yeah, here. Back of Can't the even knee touch. Yeah, yeah. But, but leaf that time, leg armor. You know, and if somebody's wearing a baggy tabard or a belt, like you know, sometimes I like the belt. So we can also grab the tabard. Yeah, like tabard, tabard, you can grab it. Yeah, shoulder, you can't. You sh shoulder yeah, piece not of armor, the shoulder, you can't. but, but yeah. the tabard. But, uh, so if we're fighting here, tabard, I can grab. Yeah. But you can't grab the metal underneath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, or if, if people's tabards are baggy, I grab it all the time. Yeah. You know, you just grab it. Pull, like, mm -hmm. you pull. 
just like judo, just so baggy sleeves, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. underneath. So again, and again, it's not nothing you can't get away with, yeah, straight away. So if somebody say, oh, I'm a grab yeah. leg, yeah. so you pick up my leg, what I'll do, I'll step in there, I'll go to his one, yeah, again, not late, but you go there, you have to go right above. Yeah. So, or people think, oh, this dim, it's, it's not that. So, so if you grab the leaves, people will often say, oh shit, how do I get there? Oh, look what I did. Step down right to him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, then then he goes on the head probably and grab my shoulder or, or my own tail, so I push it out. Now I keep, we'll keep going. Yeah. It's not. There's not a situation where you can't escape from. Not a single one. It just takes time and you have to think. So you had a question. I have a question. Um, I will try your with the shield. My my main problem is I, I stuck every time with armor at the other guy. I can't take my 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 shield. So what what's my problem? Your feet. Okay. So if I'm here, and you say you're stuck. Okay. See? Straight away. So your feet, you were square off. Yep. Straight away, Daniel turned and walked mm -hmm. walked around. So if you can't get it, don't just be holding yeah. in one position. Yeah. If um, something I say to a lot of people is to go and do judo wrestling, if you do not have experience doing other things outside the sport, go get the experience. Mm -hmm. It is very important. I say this to everybody because one of the things that we see a lot of, because of the rails, the rails encourage everyone to fight here all the time. Yeah. But when do you ever see wrestling or judo or anything happen on a line? You don't. They're moving all the time, and it's um, you have to be happy to have your back to the list. Yeah. Because if we stay here, like this, we're never going to go anywhere. You have to be happy to manoeuvre and to, keep, and to change positions all the time here. If you're not changing positions, then you're not really wrestling. All you're doing is hugging at that point. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, we have, uh, we have two questions to be honest. Uh, one question is um, you put the blade sometimes uh, in here and yeah. down between the legs here. Is it okay to put the blade yeah. here? So it's illegal to strike there? In the back of a knee? Back of a knee? That's no, you can't do that. No strike, but it's. But no. You put it there. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, because all I'm doing is this. Yeah. You know, so placing there is okay. Yeah, well, placing there is fine. The rules. Well, even striking there is fine too. So you can strike there. Yeah, it's also allowed. You know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you know, so it's fine. A lot of people read the rules and only read the rules. A lot of the time, people make the mistakes that they read the rules and they add extra information in, like that. Like, oh well, am I allowed to? Does it say you are not? No. And so when you read the rules, it is very important that you only read the rules. Because a lot of the confusion that happens in our sport is people read the rules and they add extra information that's not even in there. Like, oh, like, you know. I'm, uh, I'm the same. I'm guilty of that as well. So, so don't, don't take it personally. Maybe it's also the second question. You're not allowed to grab the blade, hmm? but to lay it somewhere as you made it. And just yeah. use it as a left. It's okay. Yeah. The rules say you cannot wrap your fingers around the blade. Yeah. I cannot do that. I can do this. So I do this all the time. I get my hand <coughs> I get on the blade like this, but I do not wrap my fingers. I press with my palm here as a lever. And so you can wrap, and I wrap my own sword all the time as well. You know, if, I, if I'm really trying to pin somebody's arm in, into me for some reason, you know, I wrap my own blade all the time mm -hmm. like this because it gives me good control. Also, if I may, uh, so Daniel was saying with, with the axes and things you can grab them with swords you can't. So this is, however, what it can do, you can wrap them. So what, what I often do, I will wrap them in the elbow and I'll go in like this. Yeah, there was a situation yeah. yesterday, yesterday in the uh, tournament, two times, uh, and the marshals broke up because uh, you're not allowed to do this with the blade here. Yeah, you, know, you can do so it. Two times. You can do that. There you are. So this, it, this, the this, this is legal. Yeah. yeah? So <laughs> that, that's legal. That's illegal. That's illegal. That, that's fine. It's illegal. So what was illegal? Sorry. So that's illegal. Yeah. I can't do that by long shot. That's illegal. That's I can't do it. That. That's that. Not illegal. grabbing. Not grabbing. Potentially. Yeah. That. Yeah. Look. Suddenly, I'm controlling him again to position. Uh, and again, look. His, his arm is there. Never bothered me, never even thought this could hurt you. 
Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. yeah. Is that a question? Yeah, we were always told it's, it's forbidden. No, no. That, that's specifically yeah, it's forbidden. forbidden. Yeah, no. yeah. But so, this is so, also. No. So that, that's you can trap the sword. Yeah. yeah. No, that's not forbidden. Okay. So if if you trap the sword and grab, then yes. Yeah, but, this is forbidden. But that's that's not. This is perfectly legal. Thank you. It's okay. For, for now. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? What time are we on? We are five past eleven. Okay. Hey Daniel, <coughs> it's eleven o'clock, so it's your turn. Your turn. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.